And we have some really neat equipment here. You know, we've got a laser cutter. We've got several 3D printers. Um, you know, we've got scopes. Um, not to mention all the woodworking stuff in the, in the machine shop. But the most important resource that we have is uh, our people. And uh, um, you know, we, we bring together folks that really have a tremendous amount of knowledge and uh, experience. And uh, you know, f for me, that's kind of the the neatest thing about Barn is getting access to all those uh, you know all all that collective wisdom. And um, so I would also encourage you guys, not only if you're not members, to become members, but if you um, know something interesting, then don't keep it to yourself. Um, you know, we can set up, we're trying to do more of these like informal talks where it's basically peers teaching peers. Um, you know, not so much like, okay, we're going to do a you know, whole lesson and then, you know, have students in a curriculum, but really kind of almost more in the, along the lines of like a graduate school seminar. Um, because we want to make the sharing of information very easy, very low friction, um, and something that happens you know as quickly as possible. Because especially when you get into any sort of technology, um, you know in this in this instance, you know web scraping, uh, web scripting, then you, you quickly realize you learn a whole lot, and then it's something that um, probably a lot of other people don't know, and anybody wanting to do it would have to then replicate. And there's just not we haven't figured out a very efficient method of getting that information out of your own head and then sharing it. So. Um, you know, please consider uh, doing a uh, uh, doing a talk if if uh, you have something that you want to share. So. Uh, the topic today is web scraping and web scripting. Um, really, th th this subject is about um, uh, gathering information that's on the internet in a uh, low effort, automated way and converting it to a format that you can then analyze and use. Um, as with every passing year, you know, more of humanity's co collective knowledge is available online. And, um, um, you know, unless you're going to go through and and manually, uh, you know, go, go to a website and click and monitor it over time. Um, you know, you're not necessarily going to have a really nice data set uh, that you can then then study and um, and and learn from. And um, so, I'm going to be talking about uh, web scraping, web scripting in um, uh, two different practical contexts. Uh, that I there are two different little pieces of software that I wrote um, that solve. Uh, a need that I had, and um, um, you know, we'll be walking through the code from those, showing you how it works, uh, showing you that the open source, uh, freely available libraries that you can use to um, set up whatever web scraping tool that you'd like to, and uh, then we can just open it up to discussion. Or if you guys have any projects that you're contemplating or figuring, out, you know, you're trying to figure out, gosh, I wish I could just get you know data that's I know it's on the internet, but there's just so much of it I can't figure out how to get it all at once. Then and that's the perfect. Um, 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 uh, that, that's that's the perfect area for for uh, automated web scraping. So the one I'm going to start with um, yeah. is uh, um, it's called the, the Zeno Canto web page, and this is this stems from an interest of mine that is a completely other uh, uh, subject that uh, could, we could do several topics, several lectures on, which is uh, machine learning, and. Um, I wanted to do um, an interesting project in machine learning, um, and uh, one thing when you're learning about machine learning or you're trying to figure out a good project to work on, you're always trying to find a, a good data set. You need data. Um, the more data, the better. The higher quality of the data, the better. And um, so, one thing that you know, one, one topic that I've been interested in for many years that I do with my parents is uh, bird watching, and bird watching is just perfect for machine learning because uh, there's this huge data set. It's very high quality and it stretches back over 100 years. Um, and increasingly it's, it's being um, uh, digitized. So you, know, you don't have to go and you know, pull up you know, dusty volumes at the or, um, Cornell Ornithological Laboratory if you want to get data. It's right on the internet. And um, uh, you know, bird watchers tend to be, they're all actually surprisingly a lot of them. And it's one of the most popular hobbies, you know, who would have thought, um, in the world. And uh, uh, a lot of them tend to be very uh, meticulous with their observations. And uh, that is like God's gift to a machine learning uh, because you've got this great data set just uh, sitting there at your disposal. And so um, kind of the, the, the angle that I was interested in is, uh, 
um, uh, automated identification of birds using their calls, you know, using the sounds. And kind of the vision was, well, wouldn't it be cool if, you know, anybody could uh, go with a little Raspberry Pi, you know, they put it in a, in a waterproof case, put it out in your yard with a little omnidirectional microphone, and it, it talks to your wireless network, and it's just it's listening. And every bird that it hears, oh, that's a, you know, uh, that, that's an American crow. Oh, that's a belty kingfisher, um, or whatever. Uh, both of which have tend to have very distinctive and easily identifiable calls. And then it would communicate that information, you know, through your wireless network, and it would go to an online database. Uh, so we would actually then, you know, it's kind of citizen science. You know, we're we're really expanding the data that's available for people to. Um, uh, to study, uh, and then if it, in, in with machine learning, the nice things you can do with it is if it doesn't know something, uh, it can then email you. It can say, "Hey, what's this recording? Tag it for me." And in the process, then your actual your classifier gets better with time. Uh, so this is an interesting project, uh, and uh, I don't think I don't think anybody's really done it before. There are a couple apps out there that kind of um, you know are aimed at uh, bird call identification, but I wanted to build one myself, and so I needed a really big data set of bird call recordings. And um, so probably the biggest one is at the Cornell Lab of Ornithology. Um, but you know, me being uh, lazy, didn't actually want to go and contact Cornell and then get access to it and find a way of replicating their database. So it turns out that there's this website called Xenocanto. And this website is for people who go out and uh, make uh, recordings of bird calls. Uh, it's similar to a uh, much better known own um website called ebird.com and this website, oh it's .org, sorry. eBird is, um, here's the Cornell line, of, yeah, the Audubon. And, and with, with eBird, you go out and you bird watch, uh, like a lot of people do uh, anyway, and then you can record um, your observations, you know, in terms of, you know, what you see and where and, uh, you know, all, all sorts of metadata. But because I was interested in, in bird calls, I needed audio recordings. And so that's precisely what um, Xenocanto does. And so you can see here right now, over time, people have submitted almost 300,000 recordings um, you know, of almost 10,000 different species. I mean, this is really cool. Uh, and this, you know, and, and so if you go to uh, advanced search, here, let's let's pick, um, and this is this is what I did kind of to to get started. So I said, well, let's go to the United States. So let's find all the recordings that people have submitted uh, from. Let's see. And so there we go. So it looks like there are. So here's the first page of of results that you get, um, and it, there are almost a thousand pages that are just like this. And um, wow, that's really cool. That's a lot of bird, bird call recordings. In fact, it looks like it is almost 30,000. And um, that's a really, really good start, you know, for a data set. Um, you know, and, and you should be able to actually, you know, you should, for at least some birds, you should be able to get pretty good at identifying their calls, you know, if you have 30,000 recordings. Um, and so each one of these is organized, you know, um, uh, you know, pretty, pretty straightforward. So it's got the, the species here, um, the length of the recording, you know, the, the person who recorded it, date, time, uh, country, and then location, which is actually given, I believe, in, uh, yeah, you can see that down there at the bottom, uh, latitude, longitude, coordinates. Um, then, uh, yeah, elevation, call, and, and so birds make different sorts of sounds. A call is different than, um, um, uh, what are some of the other options here? Flight call, you know, some birds only make the sound, certain sound when they're flying or perched or whatever, but, um, and then, uh, this is an A through E uh, grade about the quality of the recording. I mean, the people who are really serious about this go out with high gain antennas, you know, like you see at a football game, so they can hear what the quarterback is saying. And you know, they uh, wait till they see a bird, then they point their antenna at it and wait until the bird makes a noise, and then they record it and submit it up here. Um, you know, but this is this is the, the format of, of a record, and um, then each of these has has a download link. And so I said, okay, this this is cool. I want this. Data set. Um, how am I going to get it? So 
uh, the first thing that I did, and, and, and I should segue into the, you know, a uh, brief uh, ethical intermission, which is that the uh, this is the with great response power comes great responsibility talk, which is um, you know, web scraping must be done responsibly, you know, because if you don't, uh, you know, if you just start, you know, hitting a, a website, you know, every, you know, second for, you know, a couple of days, that it, it, it amounts to what's called what's known as a denial of service attack, and um, people really don't like that. Not to mention it, it's really uh, not a nice thing to do and potentially illegal, uh, certainly unethical. Um, and so I went ahead and emailed the Zeno Canto folks and I said, Hey guys, this is this is really cool. I want to do some work with uh, with your data set. Um, you know, can I replicate uh, your database and mirror it um, on my local machine? And they, you know, I said this is totally non-commercial purposes. This is just for kind of you know research and whatever. And uh, here's what I'm doing. And they said, Sure, um, just do it at nighttime. And uh, so that's what I did. And over three consecutive uh, nights, I went and I, I downloaded um, all some, you know, almost 30,000 of these recordings. Um, and then I had them on my local machine and could do um, all the research and analysis uh, that I wanted on them. So how did I do that? Um, so the first task when, you, when you're faced with a, a, a problem like this is you say, okay, well, how would I do this manually? And you'll notice that each one of these um, has a little download link. And the way that it's structured here, it looks like, if you look down at the bottom of the screen, it looks like that each of these actually has its own, probably like index number. Yeah, and they all appear to be different. And so they actually all have a unique URL. Okay, well that's kind of interesting. And so I'm gonna assume that every single recording has its unique um, index number that is then used to form this uh, URL at the bottom that's in the, um, in the same format for each recording. And okay, that's a great place to start. Um, then the next thing you want to do is I want to see kind of, you know, Im embedded within the HTML, like how does, you know, uh, what's, what's the format here? You know, uh, uh, you know w what HTML elements can I, um, can I search for? When I'm, uh, you know, trying to trying to parse this, and so, you know, with Chrome, um, you just go to inspect. You, it, you know, d depending on how familiar you are with uh, with web and, and HTML, you know, this either looks totally kind of scary and, and weird to you, or it looks very normal. Um, but what this allows you to do is to actually get the uh, all of the HTML elements of the web page that you're looking at. And so, what I wanted to do is figure out. Okay, so tr, that's an HTML element that means uh, table row. Okay, well it looks like, so the thing I'm gonna be collecting, the, thing I'm gonna be, the, the first cut is gonna be, I wanna look at every single table row uh, in every single of these 944 pages. Then, okay, all right, look at that. So here you go, common name. Well, there you go. And then here's the text, black-bellied whistling duck. And uh, okay, well, I guess that's how I find the common name. It's called common name. And uh, the same thing with the uh, recordist. I don't, I probably don't really care about it. I might as well just record it in my database just for the sake of completeness, but um, location, definitely. So if you look at location, ah, oh, look at this. So, it actually gives you the latitude and longitude, and that's pretty cool uh, because it's a it's a you know uh, a consistent way of representing location, and it's something that is very easy to then put into a database, um, and then so on. And so I'm getting a sense of what the web how the web page is structured, and here is the thing I'm most interested in. Okay, here you go. So this looks like. Um, the ID, that looks like the index. So the index for this first recording, 235152, okay. Um, and then that's gonna be the URL. Okay, so how am I gonna do this? Um, 
<clears throat> so usually with web scraping, um, you know, you're, you're trying to figure out, you're, you're gathering information and storing it on your machine. So that the obvious kind of, you know, uh, first thing you should look at is just using a database. And so for both of these applications, I set up a, 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 a PostgreSQL uh, database on my machine. Uh, I'm not going to get into the nuts and bolts of that, other than to say that it, it's not that hard. It's you know, it requires learning a few things. Um, and once you have it set up, then you know you interface it with uh, with your with your application. And so I decided I don't want to I don't want to store every single. You know, what, what's the easiest way to do this? It probably, you know, why don't I just download all of these recordings and, and they all are all in the M, in, in MP3 format, by the way. Why don't I just record them? You know, into a file on my computer somewhere. You know, into a folder. Um, and the the title for each MP3 will simply be its index number. Okay. And then for the database, the stuff that's actually going in the database, you know, all this information um, is going to be indexed by that same, in, you know, by that same number. And so as I'm doing this, you know, I can do a quick check. Oh, have I already downloaded this um, this recording? Yes or no? Well, is the index number in my in my database? Yes. Okay. Then move on to the next one. Um, and so that was the that was kind of the architecture that I came up with. So download download all, all the recordings, you know, one by one. Um, put them in to just a, a folder somewhere and while I'm doing that you know populate this database with all the metadata okay so how do we do that um, uh, I like Python a lot, um, and Python is just it's my it's probably my go-to language for you know it, whenever I just need to get something done, um, and I find it to be you know a, a very uh, very intuitive, fast language. It's not actually hard to learn, um, and uh, it is really well um, uh, positioned to do web scraping stuff. And um, oops, here this is the uh, this is actually a different, um, I'm gonna, this is the uh, one I'm going to demonstrate next, but uh, let's do BirdBot first. Utils. Okay, so we're going to look at, um, let's see. Save. Save data set to disk. Make data set download audio. Create database. Um, there you go. That's the one. Okay. So, um, so how do you do this? Okay. Um, so this is this is a pretty simple web scraping application because all that this one is going to do. So I do this in two stages. Uh, first stage, I go through the entire um, their entire web page all. 944 pages of it, and I record all this metadata. Second stage, I go back and I download all the recordings. So the first stage is going to be pretty fast. It's just all it needs to do is just cycle through these 944 pages, record all the data, and then and then I'm done. The second stage is going to take a lot longer because that's when I actually have to download these files, some of which are going to be quite large. So for the first stage. Um, I set up my, uh, um, so who, who here is familiar with Python, just so we can get, get a sense, sort of, kind of, okay. So Python is, um, um, it's a it, it's an interpreted language, um, meaning that uh, when you when you you know th what we're looking at here is just a file. It's basically just a text file, and when you uh, execute the text file as a script, um, you know Python will essentially just go straight through it. You know, boom, 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 going through all the steps, and it executes them you know one by one, and um, so. I'm using a couple different libraries here. Uh, this one, which is just a terrible name, and I'd never know how to pronounce it, Psycho. Um, this is how you interface with your database for a post PostgreSQL. Um, and then, and so that's how we. Okay, so that's what we. we first, we go through and we grab the information from um, the web page, you know, store it in RAM effectively, and then transfer it all to non-volatile storage, you know, in the database using. Uh, cycle pugga too. Uh, cycle pugga, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, <laughs> I think it needs it needs a better name. <laughs> and, and so and requests and this is um, 
<laughs> Request is a library that I think is built in with Python. And this is how Python handles HTTP um, communications. Uh, and so, and then sys is just, you know, for uh, um, working with your own file system. So, okay. So first of all, what web page am I going to be hitting? All right. Well, I know it's Xenocanto, but I'm literally just going to go right here and copy this. Um, so I, if I look at the structure of this, it's got a, you know, a query here. It says, okay, so this, I don't know, you know, the details of what this means other than, okay, this means restricted to the United States. Okay. So that's what I want to do. So cut and paste. You do or don't? Sorry. Oh, I, I. You do just want the United States. Yeah. I just wanted, yeah, for the, for the first cut, I just wanted the United, mm -hmm. United States recordings. Yeah. And um, so cut and paste. There's a question mark in that. So the question mark, yeah, the question mark in, um, uh, is, is, is called a query. Um, or is it a parameter? Ah. Query, query, query. Query thank you. Um, and that, that basically is an additional little piece of information that you're passing to the web page. So the first part of the information is, which page do I want? OK, I want Xenocanto slash explore. And then the second, you know, the, the actual uh, query string is, what restrictions do I want to put on the information that it gives back to me? And so that's all it is. Um, but I want, what I want is this page right here. You know, and so that's step one. Yeah. Um, okay. So uh, when I when I run this uh, program, it'll start right here. Uh, so f how many how many pages of data are there? You know, because we're going to have 944, right? And uh, so um, let's see. Okay. There we go. Okay. So the first thing it does is it, um, it uses uh, Python's built-in library called uh, requests to get um, this page. That's all it does. Okay. And then this checks that, you know, that, okay, you know, I didn't get a, you know, there's no web page here error or something. Um, and, uh, and that's it. That's all that it does. It just it literally pulls this page into memory. And it saves it as, it's called, you know, response from website. And then this little function returns it. Okay. And so then, so I have this, whole, you know, all, all of the, uh, uh, the raw HTML from that web page. And then um, if you actually go on this thing and you look at it, I think you'll be able to see um, somewhere in this web page is embedded the information of um, how, many, how many pages you get. And that's embedded using uh, JSON format, uh, which is just a, it's a way, way of structuring data. It's, it's called you know um, num pages. And so what I'm doing is I'm parsing the raw HTML for the JSON entry for num pages, and I'm saving it. That's how many pages I have to go through. Okay, so now I just loop through every single one of those pages. So from number one all the way to. Um, all the way to the end, and then you know, uh, just put some you know a, a message to the, the user on the screen so I know what's going on, and then so let's take a look at what this looks like. So here's page one, right? So let's go to page two. So page two. Oh, look at that. Huh. So I bet you, if you click on page three, oh, look at that. <laughs> And so that's how I, so I know the URL for every single one of these 944 pages um, because uh, all I need to do is add and page and then the number. Okay, well that's pretty simple, great. And so I go to that, I go to each of those page and then same thing. I get, um, you know, I, I grab the HTML from that page and I'm pulling out the um, recordings. Uh, and that's a tag within that's embedded within the HTML of this page. Okay, got it. And then, so is this doing like a character string search in the HTML, or is it actually pulling it out of like a TR? It's uh, not, not quite yet. It's um, I th what this is doing right here is getting just the raw HTML right. that is within. I, I, ah, see, I, I, I can't remember the exact details of this, but it's, it's JavaScript, right? So it's pulling out some element of the 
Uh, well, yeah, and I just I, I can't remember the uh, the details of that. Other than to say that you know what it's doing is um, let's see for en each entry um, in the web data. Uh, yeah, okay, got it. So e each one of these rows is a, rec a recording, okay? Boom, 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 boom. And so the output of you know this loop, each time it iterates, the web data is the HTML of that recording. And so what that looks like is gonna be, you know, right, yeah, so it is, it is a, a, a TR element then. D, 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 D. Here. Anyway, um, so in the JSON message, there's going to be a gazillion of those. Yeah. Those records. Mm -hmm. You're just going to loop through every record of JSON. Loop through each one of them, and there aren't. I mean, it's not. It's not like a crazy number of them. It's you know. Thirty thousand in this case. Well, this one, yeah. If you in each, in each single page, it just goes page by page. It's so, yeah, mm -hmm. it's it's not it's not that much. Um, let's see, and then. Oopsie. Come on. Uh, oh, really? The darker blue. That, yeah. yeah, the purple. And, uh, yeah. Blue. You'd be better off turning the syntax for Yeah, I might be able to do uh, here. Um, let's try something high contrast. Okay. That's the same one I had, I guess. I don't think margarita would be great. <laughs> <laughs> right. There we go. Okay, that's better. Okay, great. <laughs> um, and then, um, let's see. Da -da -da. Let's see. So then, um, the next thing I need to do is. Uh, let's see. So that's it. So uh, all, all that this is doing is it's taking, I, I made a, li a list. It's just making a list called recordings, and each entry in this list is one of these rows. That's all it is. Okay, great. So now, uh, once it's done with that, so this is looped through you know, every single page um, you know, on, on that we're seeing right now, you know, one through 944, and it puts into a just a big uh, list, you know, the HTML of each one of these rows. Great. Okay. So now let's store that in, in my database. Um, so then this uh, is, you know, um, uh, it, it you know op opens up my database that I previously set up, and then it's going to see if. Um, the recording already exists. And you recognize this as just plain old SQL. And so it's just doing a, uh, a SQL query to the database. Hey, you know, let's pick, take everything from, you know, the entire database uh, where the uh, ID equals, you know, boom. And if it's, um, if, if that's not present in the database, then it just, okay, well, let's put this recording into the database. And that's what this is doing. And so, um, uh, you know, th this goes into each row of your database, um, you know, location, CNT, I can't remember. I think, um, uh, uh, can, maybe it's count, I can't remember. Con yeah, country, yeah, that's right. Um, you know, license information. URL is the one I'm really interested in because this is where the download is located. Um, and these are ordered. So you have to be a little bit careful careful when you're setting this up that you keep it in the, the right order of your actual database. And there are ways that you don't have to be so finicky if you want, but uh, you know, this, is, this is kind of a, a pretty straightforward way of doing it. Um, and uh, that's it. And then so you know, once it's done, it just it commits that change, and then, um, and then I'm done. It, it just it goes on to the next one. Yeah. So that's, uh, let's see, of course we execute. Um, ba 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 ba. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. if. Um, fe so yeah, the, the way this is set up, so it executes this uh, SQL command, and it says, "Oh, um, what'd you get? How many? How many?"